Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> on the line from Oak Towns 357, we have Sweet LD. He would say, let me see what you have. And then we would show him, and he'd say, no, I want it bigger. I want this. I want it mm. larger. I want it more intense. He says that he wrote all of it. Hammer did not. People think that we were not approachable. They felt like we were standoffish. It was none of those things. It was just the way he dealt with us and felt that he needed to keep control. I started with him as he was selling things out of the back of his car. He was making it work. This, this man hustled, um, and we were not getting paid. We didn't get paid. We were not getting paid. We had to really decide if we were going to continue uh, working in the way that we were. Everybody worked. You know what I mean? So, yes, he made that kind of money, but he took care of no one. So you started out as a dancer, and then you transitioned uh -huh. into into rapping. How did how did you do that? We did. That was interesting. Um, he had a record deal with Capital, and Capital wanted him to come with more than just himself. So he offered uh, a group, a female group, which was Old Town Three Five Seven, myself, Gerald P, and Lil P. Um, Lil P was the cornerstone, um, centerpiece to get her and her rapping. And I was like, okay, let's let's give this some work with the three of them. Mm. And um, we got in the studio, and he gave us the opportunity to write. So we co-wrote some songs with him and got on the mic and, and just did our thing. And surprisingly enough, <laughs> it was received really well. So there was some talents that we had not expected to explore, um, that when it was given, the opportunity was given to us to actually do that, um, outside of just dancing, you know, we jumped at it. Mm. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Did he? Did that he write? Cool. Did he write like all of your early stuff, or how did you? How did the writing process come? Because it's not just hard to jump into. No. It's not easy to jump into rap. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not. But I had um, some experience with writing poetry, so mm. some of the stuff helped me with um, rhythm, with rhyme. Um, and then he did write a lot of it. He he says that he wrote all of it. Hammer did not. So. <laughs> oh. I'm just going to tell that he could get on here and argue, and we would all argue him down. But he did not. We all co-wrote with him, you know, because that's a man writing for women. So you really can't uh, do that from the woman's perspective. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Uh, he didn't do it all. So he's trying yeah. to claim that he, he was the one that was writing he, all those lyrics. He, he's, he's a man. <laughs> No offense to you. I'm hey, just it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so his shows were pretty intense. Um, oh, explain, definitely. explain what it was like. You know, going on the road. I want to talk about the rehearsal process. I mean, talk to me about you know being a dancer. Um, you know, for MC Hammer and some of the stuff you experienced. Well, I can give him credit for having us change um, our perspective on dance. Now, you know, you got to realize we were all club dancers. Myself. Uh, Lil P, Terrible P, Ace, all club dancers, even him, all club dancers. So when it came to performing and having a stage presence, he just brought a, di a different perspective. And it was just based on his expectation what kind of show he wanted to present. So um, he taught us positioning. He taught us um, kind of how to think of a song to choreograph a song. You know what I'm saying? Not just out there dancing, but actually listen to it for chorus, for verse. For the breakdown, um, all of those little elements, any changes in the music, how to accent that. So there were different things that he actually brought to um, dancing for us. You know what I'm saying? And then the rehearsals were intense. It was like nonstop. So sometimes you could be in there anywhere from six to ten hours, maybe twelve hours. You have not eaten. Um, people are coming from work or school or whatever they did and um, trying to hang. Uh, so they were kind of grueling. It, it was no, yeah, it was no sidestepping on those. It was definitely grueling. And um, we kept each other in check. We tried to have as much fun as we could, <clears throat> given the circumstances. But, yeah, it was just, mm. I don't know how else to say it, but it was a rude, hold on one second. Go ahead. Awakening. And, it, and we caught on really easily. We did not have trouble catching the choreography. We, we, um, he had things that he uh, wanted us to do. And then we also created choreography to the music um, that he gave us. So uh, he would come back and he would say, let me see what you have. If he hadn't been there for the rehearsal to help create it, he would say, let me see what you have. And then we would show him and he'd say, no, I want it bigger. I want this. I want it mm. larger. I want it more intense. So there was just, you know, um, learning on the job, mm. on the job training. There we go. 
yeah, for rehearsals. Now, uh, it never changed. Once he started touring and we were touring with him and performing with him, the rehearsals never shortened. Um, we'd often have to practice while we toured um, on the road. Um, if he had any changes to the song, uh, how they were listed in the show, we'd have to change that kind of stuff up too. But he always wanted us to go into a show in tent. Mm. He did not want to leave anything to question. It was high intensity. It was nonstop. We had to get him hard and, um, you know, get, get the job done. Also, what he did too is he started filming um, the shows, the video. He started having videotapes. A video done of the shows when we performed, and he would watch them afterwards mm. to see what worked and what didn't work. And then he'd say, "Hey, you guys need to work on this," or you know, "LT looks tired," or you know, "You know, you know, move," you know, stuff like that. So um, yeah, there was a lot. Mm. It was like the sporting, um, like playing sports. You know, you're rehearsing, you're practicing, you're training, and then you watch back. Um, you watch the plays back from what you were doing before. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Very interesting. Uh, one of my favorite songs in hip hop history, period, is "We're All in the Same Gang" from the West Coast Rap All Stars. Yeah. Which, for anyone who doesn't yeah. know, it was a it was kind of a peace uh, song that a bunch of West Coast artists did back in the early '90s. Everybody from Easy E to MC Hammer to Diggable, uh, Digital mm -hmm. Underground to yeah. Oak Towns Three Five Seven. We were blessed part of it that is true yeah i'm that terrible t true. and i'm yeah. sweet ld with three five seven three, totally five, seven. <laughs> <laughs> kicking on my ass about a quarter to nine oh the oh, i'm telling oh you man my God. <laughs> you make me feel so bad because i do not know all the lyrics about that so funny but yeah talk to we, me about that I'm please honest, we didn't it, we didn't understand we did not have uh any clear angling that we were going to be a part of that Okay. It was an agreement between MC Hammer and my conception and some of my conception's uh, people mm. in Los Angeles. And my conception was part of a gang. He felt like something needs to be done on the lines of uh, self-destruction that the East Coast had done. Mm -hmm. um, so he wanted uh, an anthem, so to speak, you know, in response to that, like that, and is showing all the unity with um, hip-hop artists from uh, the West Coast. So, you know, we were blessed. I mean, there's no way, no other way to say it. When Hammer explained it to us, we were like, oh, okay, well, that's great that you're doing that. Um, it's going to be a good look, you know, whatever, whatever. And then he comes back, he goes, well, no, you guys will be part of it, too. And we're like, what? Huh? Nice. You know, because Hammer was looked at as, um, he wasn't always looked at as favorable. You know, he's from the West Coast, I mean, and so he wasn't looked at as like he was a true uh, rap artist or MC or any of those things. And so sometimes people plump O-Town 357 in, into that. So we kind of got both where people loved the group, um, and then sometimes they didn't. There was always some criticism, so we just didn't assume anything. If he was invited to do um, We're All in the Same Gang, I just thought that was that was dope, and it's going to be great. And then he said, you guys are going to be fired. We was like, what? You know. Mm. So um, we had to kind of figure out what we were going to say. Um, and then we get there. Now, this is one thing that I did have a, a little issue with, is what we were wearing. Oh, uh, okay. Anyway, so that was my, um, like, this is the hood in L.A. Yeah. You, you know guys know went I mean? to the projects, we, right? Let, you paint the picture yes, for them. You guys we recorded did. this in the, Nick I think it was Nickerson Gardens or something like that. We, we did, and we did not know that that's where it was going to be. So there was a lot of details that were not shared with us. <laughs> Yeah, that's a big detail. You know what I'm I live in a, yeah. I live in LA, and you gotta warn me if we're going to the Nickerson Gardens, man. Well, see, and we didn't have, you know, we're not from LA, so we don't know what's what. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we have been there several times to film videos, but again, you're at a hotel, you know, mm -hmm. at the swimming pool, or you're driving down the street, uh, in you know Beverly Hills or wherever it was they had us driving down the street. So you're not really familiar with all the little nooks and crannies of Los Angeles, so mm -hmm. you know, so. Uh, when he says you're going to be part of it, we're like, okay, cool. You know, cool, that's great. We're in shock, we're excited, but whatever. And then he says, we got to film the video. So we're like, okay, what do we wear? You know, he's like, we got style, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Then we get there. And I'm like, wow. We are so overdressed. <laughs> I mean, like, just so, uh, it was so uncomfortable. But, um, I don't know to this day, honestly, if anybody had anything negative to say about us being there, dressed the way that we were. 
we were actually received really warmly. You know, even to the point where when it was performed on Arsenio Hall, we were again included in that. So we dressed totally different for the Arsenio Hall show. But, yeah, it was just a different, um, how do you say, um, this was almost like a, a welcoming from people that you normally would not have a certain conversation with. You wouldn't be in the same room with. You wouldn't um, be interacting or kicking it with. You know, this is, again... Um, L.A., you know, uh, hip-hop artists from L.A., and, and we met, we had met E.C.E. and N.W.A. I'm trying to think who else we had met. Uh, Tone Loke, I think we had met. There's a few that we had met, but for the most part, we had not met a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And they were really like, we were family. Mm. Oddly enough, it was like we were family, you know what I'm saying? And we were coming together for the common cause and, to, you know, to get this message out that we should be doing better, we should be better example, you know, to the youth, and that we all could be better, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it was kind of like, interesting. Yeah. You know, not what I expected. It really wasn't what I expected. I really thought we would get, um, look that kind of funny, little backlash, you know, little cold shoulder. It was nothing like that. Good. Nothing like that at all. Yeah, it was like, we're all here for the same cause. We're all doing our part, and your part, whatever you have to contribute is welcome. You know, so let's get this done. Yeah. That's how I felt. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was really cool. I was in middle school when that song came out, and um, you, anyone who's old as I am, you remember that there was no DVR, there wasn't anything like that. So if you wanted to watch a certain show, you had to stay up late to watch the show. And I'll never forget when you guys went on Arsenio Hall, 11.35 p.m. Oh and not just 11.35, <laughs> you guys waited to the last part of the, sh the end of the show to go on. So I had to stay up till like 12.30. I had school the next day, but I'll never forget oh that. Please tell me what it was, was like. So Tell me what it was like. It was so okay. powerful. I got goose to this day. I'm getting goosebumps. I'm looking at myself right now I, because I just, I just got goosebumps again because we were nervous. Mm. Um, they had already said how it would be that as your verse came up, it would come out. So we wouldn't all be out there at the same time saying it. It's just as that person's verse came, you would go out. You know what I mean? So we're having to follow. You know, like Misha Lay and <laughs> he's the e, all mm -hmm. these people. I'm like, oh my God, you know, but it was the second time, no, I'm sorry, that was like the third time we had been on our student hall, but in a different capacity. Mm. So we had been on our student hall twice with Tamar, but now we were standing on our own, stepping out on our own, mm -hmm. in front of the audience, and having to perform this song. When I tell you, I could not be more proud of Oak Town 357, just for being in that element and just for being a part of that and just being able to contribute to that that what is it a trigger and a thought process that oh okay we can do something you know different we can do something better people do care people are aware you know what i'm saying um so it was like arsenio hall just kind of opened up doors that i don't think any other outside of monique um african-american and it's not just Arsenio Hall, because there are people that came before him, so I'm not, you know, negating those uh, in the past, like Flip Wilson, I'm telling my age, but you know what I'm saying. So there's those people that had television shows with their own life, Flip Wilson or whatever, but Arsenio Hall, for our era, for my age, oh, he was, was he, like a Don for Gilligan. Oh. He was like major, and I used to think that one day I'm going to be on Soul Train. Well, it, that happened. So to be on Arsenio Hall was just as major as my desire to be on Soul Train, but this time I'm not there as a dancer with MC Hammer. I'm actually there as an artist. There was so much going on for me and for Terrible T in that moment. And then to be on stage, and again, it is, um, we call it, it's, it's this camaraderie, that's the word. It is a unified camaraderie. We are here to support each other. We have a message. It is imperative that we get it out, and we are showing up for our people. Showing up for ourselves, we're showing up for our people. To me, that was so powerful because I know Arsenio Hall reached a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you go beyond the recording studio. Now you go beyond the video. Now you're on national TV, and it's like, oh, you, they're not playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. They're not playing with this message, and so you had to stand in that. And it was just very empowering. I mean, it was just very empowering, and it was so like usually if you get that many people together, there's some confusion, there's some drama, there's some something. No, every time it was like really smooth as butter. It was just like, you get me just here to do this. 
you know, so it was it was very powerful. Yeah. I read somewhere where you mentioned that you made more dancing on Arsenio Hall. That Arsenio Hall paid you for those that dancing then. Um, that then you got paid, you know, when you were dancing for Hammer. Um, talk to me about the money and all that stuff back then. Um. Well, what? Okay. So, just to kind of go back a little further, when Hammer invited me to be part of uh, in, in one of his videos, he said specifically, uh, clearly, would you like to be in my video? So for me, at that age, 22, 23 years old, I'm thinking of a cute video girl. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You put on an outfit, because the videos were just becoming very popular. You put on an outfit, you're cute, you're the cute girl, or with the cute girls in the video. So I'm like, sure. There were two of us, my friend Carla. He asked both of us, and we both said yes. So um, before any of that happened, before the video ever took place, Hammer invited us to this location, and we started, quote, unquote, rehearsing. So for us, we don't understand what we're rehearsing for. We don't. We don't, what are we rehearsing for when all we're going to do is just be in a video dancing? You know what I mean? Dancing mm -hmm. around or just, we're just eye candy. So, um, this goes on for months, you know, maybe even a year. We're not getting paid to rehearse. Mm -hmm. We're not getting paid to dance. So, in his mind, he's three or four steps ahead of whatever it was he was explaining to us. So, it, we had to get with him and say, listen, what, what is going on because you only have to in the video. Oh, yeah, 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 but we we doing this, this, and this first, and so on and so forth. I want y'all to be my dancers. Okay, well, if we're going to do that, you know, we need to get paid. We didn't get paid. We were not getting paid. So when we got on the Arsenio Hall show, and I, let me be clear, we were not getting paid for rehearsals. We were not getting paid for local shows we were doing in the Bay Area. We were not getting paid. So when we got on our Arsenio Hall show, we don't understand how television works. We don't understand that when there's, you're a hired artist, then you're paid for that show for your time being on the show. You mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. We didn't know that. So, Cameron says, we have the RCL Hall show uh, scheduled. We're going to go to LA. Da, 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 da. This is the song we're doing. This is da, da, da. Okay, got it. So, we worked, rehearsed, you know, got all the choreography down. We knew it wasn't going to be da, da, da. We finished the recording of the show, and then, you know, by the end of it, we're getting handed checks. And we didn't know that they were checked. <laughs> so we opened it, and it was like, oh, what is this for? And someone explained <laughs> what it was for. Wow. And uh, myself and, and, and Lil P, we looked at each other, and we were like, so we just got paid, you know, to just do this on TV for like three minutes? It's also in your mind, like, well, what the heck is going on? Why is he not paying us? You know what I mean? So there was a very uh, big disconnect with that. We had to really decide if we were going to continue uh, working in the way that we were under the conditions that we were. Because, again, this is, these were her star intense. Um, you're still traveling around the Bay Area um, to do radio, to do performances at schools and auditoriums. Um, to take pictures. Uh, by now, they had opened up the truth store, so we're working in the truth store. These kind of things. Mm -hmm. Now they paid us for truth, but as far as performances, they were not paying us. Um, so it was a lot to have to process and really come to terms with. Like, are you going to stay with this? You know what I'm saying? So little T is one of them that was just like, you know what? With everything else that's going on here, and the fact that we're not getting paid consistently, she was out. You know, and that's just. That's the truth. I mean, so when people say um, something I have, it's just a trigger for me. When people say, well, you know, Hammer, he was one of the most successful uh, MCs or rap artists, da, 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 and he had this and that, and he took care of all these people. I'm trying to figure out who did he take care of mm. because I wasn't laying on my back. I wasn't lazy. I wasn't asking him for money. We worked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Everybody worked. You know what I mean? So... Mm. Yes, he made that kind of money, but he took care of no one like that. But when you look at the fact that I started with him as he was selling things out of the back of his car, he was making work, this, this man hustled, um, and we were not getting paid, the hammer did not take care of us. Mm. That money situation was, listen, we need money for outfits. Well, I, I don't have it right now. Let's see what I can do. Or see what you got to come up with. You know what I'm saying? Um, so there was no, uh, dancers now get paid for rehearsals, 
They get paid to choreograph. They get paid for videos. They get paid for touring. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, that's not what we were getting paid for. So uh, I just want that to be clear. Yeah, that, we work. Yeah, that would never fly these days. That would never fly these days. No, oh, oh no, they have unions now. They have all kind of dancers uh, uh, contracts where you can't. This this is a totally different ball game right now. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? But back then, because you didn't know the business, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes you didn't know what your yes was really agreeing to. Yeah, you could be caught up and it would be on the fly. Like I said, learning on the job is also learning this business on the job. What are you willing to take? What are you willing to put up with? Yeah. You know, how far are you going to commit to this to change the situation? You know what I'm saying? Mm. So not speaking negatively about him, that is what we were raised in, mm. in this business. You know what I'm saying? It's the real of it. It is it, what he did. He's not the only one. You know what I'm saying? And this is not new. You know, people, artists back in the day, signed contracts, on tours, and would not get paid. The record company is getting paid. You know, the manager is getting paid. But the artist is not getting the money that they need to survive. Mm -hmm. This is why you call it the chicken circuit, because they had to go from place to place to place to eat for their performances. That's a lot wow. of times what happened. You know, they were not getting paid. Their pay was to be able to stay somewhere and to eat the food, a meal. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's, it's, it's one of those businesses where you really have to know. You got to know it. And unfortunately, in 2019, I don't think a lot has changed unless a person comes into it and they understand mm. the record label, the, the A&R, the manager, the road manager. Unless they understand all of that stuff, no. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of this stuff is still happening. You oh, know, yeah. so it it was a it was an intense. Um, like I said, on the fly, I decided to stay. You know, even though Lil P left, and uh, it was myself and Daryl P. We kept thinking that the longer we stayed, the harder we worked, the better we um, surpassed whatever uh, you know obstacle they put in our way or whatever opportunity. You know, they said, "Well, you guys have this to do. Okay, we'll meet it and surpass it." We always felt like whatever we did, we would finally earn their respect, you know, and be treated differently. And that just was not the case. Mm. You know, it just wasn't the case. So in doing so, the hard work, our work ethic, our creativity, um, all of those things, they were able to shine through in our videos and in our music, and we still have fans to today. Mm -hmm. So for that, you know, being pressed into a diamond under that pressure, I can thank him for that. You know what I'm saying? Damn. But, Ooh, yeah, that was but deep. I love it. I love I'm it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. But don't, don't, don't negate what I went through, that struggle, by saying he took care of me. No, sir. Mm. He did not. Yeah. No, I was not an invalid. I was not sick. Thank God. It was none of those things. We were fighting for respect. We were fighting for support, just encouragement, just any of those things. That's what we were fighting for in everything that we did. You know, so even though we didn't always get it in the way that we thought we should, from those people um, handling our careers. Like I said, we have fans to this day. We have respect from artists in the music industry to this day, even though they didn't get to know us. That's another thing. You know, he kept us so in the rap. We didn't get to make any network connections with people in the business. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So people think that we were not approachable. They felt like we were standoffish. It was none of those things. It was just the way he dealt with us and felt that he needed to keep control that if anybody got close to us, um, they would snatch you up? They could infiltrate. No, not really snatch us up. I think that was part of it, but they felt like oh, um, they could infiltrate right, the organization, know the secrets of the organization. It's, it's like nobody's got time hmm. for that. Wow. You know what I mean? So it, it was very interesting. It was very interesting. Now, again, it had a beautiful vibe, but, you know, that's the stuff we were dealing with. If, if you're looking at Walt Disney and Disneyland, you know there's things that's going behind, going on behind the, the curtain mm -hmm. to make it look pretty to you for you to spend your money to go see it. Mm -hmm. But behind that curtain, you could be a drunk handling that, that clown suit. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just don't know. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's the kind of stuff we dealt with. Damn. Yeah. That's the industry in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen.